Hi everyone. I and my buddy Joe English are sending our regards. Uh, today we would like to uh, continue our discussions of Jack London's uh, The Law of Life. So without further ado, let's share the Word document where we will uh, have some discussions of some of the questions raised about uh, this genre of literature. Okay, uh, write short notes about the writer, Jack London. He was born in 1876 in San Francisco, California, USA. He's an American novelist and short story writer whose best known works are The Call of the Wild and White Fang, Slow the Struggle for Survival show. Yeah, so uh, these two, works of art show the fight for or the struggle for survival so the theme of life versus death and the struggle for life is a recurrent theme uh, in his uh, writings and including the law of life as well during the 20th century he was one of the most extensively translated of american authors um, moving on to another question. What is the setting of the story, The Law of Life, the cold woods of Alaska around the Klondike area? All right, what traits do the main character display? Uh, that is old Koskush. He is a strong, emotionally tough, and brave, practical, and reflective. He was actually the chief of his tribe when he was younger and stronger all right uh, what point of view is used to describe the experiences of the main characters the story is told um, by an outside voice this voice or that narrator is able to describe the thoughts and feelings of the characters and this gives readers some insight uh, into Kaskush emotions and uh, feelings and memories and so forth. So what is the significance of the title, The Law of Life? Uh, actually, The Law of Life is Death, according to Jack London. And that theme, as we said uh, just um, uh, a few, uh, you know, a few seconds uh, ago, is recurrent, a recurrent theme, the theme of life and death, or the theme that death is central to life and, and stuff like that is a recurrent theme in uh, all his writings, especially The Law of Life and the other two we mentioned, White Fang, The Call of the Wild, etc. What are the conditions of life for the tribe as described in the short story, The Law of Life by Jack London, and why did the tribe leave old Koskush behind? They live in a snowy environment, temperatures way below the zero. We're talking about Alaska here. Uh, their only source of heat is wood fires. They uh, collect some wood sticks and uh, use that as a source of heat and warmth. Their only transportation is by dog sled. Uh, they can uh, either fish to have salmon as food or hunt for moose. These are the two main sources of food or protein that they uh, use. In the society of the story, everyone is expected to contribute to the tribe. Uh, once a person cannot contribute, he is left behind when the tribe moves and it is expected that he will die. Koskush is no exception, even if he was a chief at a certain time because he was part of that tradition, he was part of that law of the tribe, uh, let's say, or so to speak. So he is left behind to die. Uh, it sounds harsh and, uh, inhum and inhuman to do so, but this was the tradition of his tribe. Uh, once the person is too old to move uh, around with them, uh, searching for food, searching for warmth, they leave him behind. Was Old Koskush upset about being left behind and explained? All right, well, 
Uh, I don't think he is uh, uh, or he would be uh, upset because he was part of that tradition and part of that school, and he was the chief of that tribe himself. Uh, but just as any human emotion, when somebody is left to uh, uh, face death alone, he becomes afraid and worried, and he would wish to try to avoid that if he can. Uh, mention the conflicts in the story, the law of life. Well, we have the conflict between man and uh, himself, like body and mind. Koskush is old and uh, his body is, is withering. Uh, his uh, sight uh, has started to uh, be um, not as good as it used to be. Um, he's actually a man too old and and he is uh, uh, you know coming closer and closer to death but at the same time his mind is uh, opposing the idea he doesn't want to uh, surrender to the idea of death uh, and being left behind to die in the snow uh, also man versus man is another conflict uh, of the story uh, someone has left Koskush out to die. The man just happens to be his son. Uh, his son now is the chief of the tribe. And as we said, the tradition of that tribe is that once a person, whether he or she, uh, is too old to move with them, uh, searching for food, searching uh, uh, for food so they can survive, and also for warmth in, in, uh, in a harsh environment like the Alaskan environment, uh, they just leave that person behind and, and move on. Okay. Um, all right. So that was another uh, conflict in the story. A uh, third one is man versus nature. Koskush is at the mercy of the harsh winter where, as I said, temperatures go way below the zero. Uh, if somebody is there without food and without uh, source of warmth, he will freeze to death, basically. Okay, so this was another um, uh, conflict in the story. In case of Kosku, she will be left alone to freeze, but actually also the wolves will circle around him and they will eat him. So he will die eventually uh, in the environment, whether uh, by the snow or by the wolves in the end. He wants to say, London wants to say that uh, death is inevitable, whether you die this way or the other way, as we grow old and when the time comes, we will die uh, regardless of how, but this will be the end result. And that is the only law or rule of life um, as he wants to uh, tell us or as he uh, gives that message to us in that story and in other stories uh, he wrote before. All right, moving on to another question. What did men tend to do in a time of plenty and what did this probably not occur during times of famine? Well, when they have plenty of food, they have time to do something other than hunt. So they use the opportunity to battle their enemies during famine. Um, when people are hungry, they are weaker and spend their energy on finding food and so on. According to the law of life, what is the task of every living thing in nature is to accept death and continuity of the race. It, in other words, people die and the other members of the race just continue living. And this is a rule or law of life. Why is Koskush surprised that his son comes back to talk to him? Because not all old men's sons come back. Like, like probably his son uh, became emotional and he came back to check on his dad once and for all. Um, but he says, even if he tries his best to be with his father and so on, uh, that doesn't prevent death from occurring to all Koskush. He himself, his son, when he uh, grows older and the time comes, he will have to die as well. 
What does Kaskush think his son may yet do? And do you believe that Kaskush actually believes that this is a likely possibility? He thought that the heart of his son might soften and he would come back with uh, the dogs to take him, like with the sled, uh, and take him with the tribe. He doesn't, in fact, because he once left his father to die alone in the cold, as that is the law of the tribe. He just came to have a look at him, but not to take him back to the tribe. All right, what does the old bull moose represent? He represents the aging chief himself, that is old Koskush, and he represents life uh, itself and how, uh, uh, you know, without his herd, he will have to be uh, facing uh, death and so on. So the moose represents life, and the wolves we talk about in the story represent death and so on. Uh, what are the common themes in the story? Death and survival, although Kaskush's body may be old and unable to defend itself, uh, physically there is a desire to live on, like all human beings. Okay, in the law of life, how does Kaskush die and how was expected and how was he expected to die? He was expected to freeze to death because he ran out of uh, wood sticks uh, that they usually use to, as a source of warmth and uh, to make fire. Uh, but instead of freezing to death, he was eaten by the wolves. What is naturalism and how is Jack London's The Law of Life considered a naturalistic short, short story? Naturalism is a 19th century literary movement that portrays life exactly as it is and that human beings have very little control over their own lives, but instead are at the mercy of uh, natural elements, such as in this story, Old Koskush is left in a harsh environment in Alaska, temperatures way below the zero in winter. In winter they left him alone. Uh, he was expected to freeze to death or to be eaten by the wolves, and that's what that's what happened. Wolves did the job and finally he dies. Comment on the following, depending on how they appeared in the story. Tsetkum Tuha, uh, she's old Koskush, uh, granddaughter. She is careless as she shows how unimportant her grandfather is to her. She doesn't care about him. She was too busy to waste a thought upon her uh, grandfather. Koskush's son, he almost feels guilty as he returned to his father to say goodbye. And then the tribe, the law of the tribe says that all people will be left behind because they're not able to move around as they used to be when they are younger. And simply this, this is how things were done in the tribe. Yes, inhuman. Yes, a lot of people don't like that when they read this. However, um, as a naturalistic short story, Jack London was um, representing things as they are in such tribes without his input as what morals should, uh, what morals say or what uh, people should do in this circumstances and what they shouldn't have done and so forth. Okay, consider a uh, literal and figurative meaning of each of the following symbols. The moose, yes, symbolizes Koskush and that he has to fight for his life. The wolf uh, symbolizes death, as we discussed earlier. The fire and stick symbolized life and its warmth, and uh, the desperate attempts to extend life. If you are called Koskush, will you think? the same way about human beings, death, elaborate. Well, I would be uh, disappointed if my own tribe and my own people just uh, leave me behind, um, you know, uh, and also I would be uh, trying to avoid death as uh, much as I could, but eventually we will die. There's a difference between if you die of natural causes, and if you die, 
like because you are left behind because uh, people around you didn't do uh, their job uh, like taking care of you when you are older and you're not able to move and so on. So if I were in his shoes, of course, I would be upset. And of course, I wouldn't have accepted this rule of that tribe. But as um, I said earlier, we are describing things as they are without any input from us, from the writer, like uh, about what should be done and what shouldn't be done. Okay, map out events according to the plot. We have the exposition when Kaskush is left alone by himself in the snow and rising action, he starts to remember the moments of his past life by uh, meditating and reflecting on them. He brings back memories of the famine and the recovery of it what that happened before. He uh, remembers also, he remembers uh, Zengha tracking down the moose so they could see the wolves kill it. The memory of the wolves killing the moose and how it fascinated him that the moose fell down and got back up. The climax, a back of wolves in uh, circles uh, Koskush as he lie in the snow, remembering the harrowing fate of the moose, he resolves to fight the wolves for his life. And the falling action, the wolves are attacking Koskush. Resolution, Koskush surrounded by wolves, accepts the law of life and embraces his death. Even if he try his best, but at the end, uh, as we said, people will have to die. Yes, so uh, think of the story as a naturalistic one. Um, uh, the moral there, uh, sometimes you feel that this tribe is not uh, very moral in their tradition and in their uh, actions, but uh, eventually we will have to face death. But as I said, if you die of natural causes, that is understandable. But if you die because of wolves and because uh, your tribe or your people just uh, left you behind. That is not very understandable by, by some people, but as I said, this is a naturalistic story and this was the tradition of the tribe. Anyway, thank you for following and thank you for watching. I will uh, meet you again in other uh, videos. Bye for now.